This is an interesting speech. The point of this, uh, the point of this speech was to get to the point. And what that meant was to be sure to transmit to the audience the general purpose and specific purpose. And I think you did that with ease. The general purpose was clearly to persuade us to, to understand the truth behind reverse mortgages as opposed to the three myths you mentioned. And the specific purpose was to dispel those myths. Your introduction was really good. It, it got right to that idea. It, put, it created what the psychologists call a set or receptivity in the audience. Like, what are the myths and what should we know about them? And then the body of the speech did exactly that. It asked here about the speech's organization, whether or not it supported the speech's specific purpose, and it really did. And that's because you used what's called signposting, oral signposting. You told us what you were going to say during the introduction, then you clearly you gave us those three points, and then you summed it up again at the end. Any of us who have listened to lectures of any kind, whether at school or at work, or somebody explaining how to how to operate some machine or something, know how confusing it can be if there's no oral signposting. It's hard to keep track of how the steps work, and you solved that problem perfectly, I thought. The real reason the speech worked was, it asked you about your confidence and sincerity. Well, you're an expert at this. You know more about this than any of us could know, no matter how long we thought about it, I guess. And you really transmitted that. You gave, to me anyway, you seem, you came across as having expertise. You seemed calm and self-assured. And it would be very difficult to listen to you and say, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, you clearly do know what you're talking about. And you transmitted that without seeming arrogant. You know, you never told us, I know what I'm talking about. You just made it clear by the way you did it. That brings us to something you could have done better. And that is the gestures. You may not know it but you spent your entire speech like this, and you were squeezing your thumb so hard <laughs> that the end of it would turn bright red sometimes, kind of like that. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of an entertaining effect, but I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure it was what you were looking for. You know? the, the real problem with this, well, there are two problems. One is, it's not natural for anyone to speak like this. Out in the regular world, most people use their hands quite a bit. And when you go like this, it makes it look unnatural. And then also it lowers your gestures, and low gestures are, are gestures of supplication, request, as opposed to power gestures, which are high. You know, if you think about the, the presidential campaign that just finished, you would never see one of those candidates say, I want you to do whatever, because that makes it look like they're begging. It was always, I want you to do whatever. You've got to do something about the gestures, and as luck would have it, Project 5 is one that requires you to use gestures. So that will solve itself in due course here. <laughs> but it, it was a weakness, not, not a weakness in the speech so much as it detracted somewhat from the potential strength of the speech. All in all, though, I thought it was a very good speech. It achieved the purposes of the project uh, pretty much perfectly and edified us.